Yesterday, the Natural Resources Defense Council released a report that claims that major TV manufacturers may be exploiting weaknesses in federal energy use tests to hide actual energy costs. Really, the only company that might be excited by this news should be VW, which can take a bit of a respite as we celebrate the one year anniversary of that company's emissions cheating scandal. According to the NRDC, Samsung, LG, and Vizio, which represent half of the US market, are exploiting flaws in the government's testing that could cost owners an extra 1.2 billion in utility bills and more than 5 million metric tons in pollution. And that's if only like one third of TV owners change their settings. Samsung, already having a hell of a week because their phones are exploding and not allowed on planes, LG and Vizio are actually designing TVs to get a good score on the DOE energy use tests, and they also have software that disables key energy saving features with little to no on-screen warning. All you have to do is change the main picture setting, which is likely the first thing that we do once we get that bad boy mounted on the wall, and that alone can boost energy use by 50 to 100%. The NRDC also found that viewing HDR content could increase energy use by 30 to 50%. The implications could mean that it costs twice as much to operate a television, adding $100 to $200 in operating costs over each television's 10 year lifetime. See, this is the only discrepancy that I've found thus far, is nobody keeps a TV for 10 years anymore. You're lucky if that thing hasn't crapped out after three or so. Hello. Too much Facebook can be harmful. It can be bad on your eyes, it can even hurt your career if you don't watch what you say or at least who you say it to, and it can even cause anxiety, depression, and general loneliness. I mean, do we all suffer from general loneliness from time to time? However, yesterday the Associated Press reported Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg's effort to battle disease. No, not, not one in particular, all disease. And he and his wife, Priscilla Chan, who is a pediatrician, put up about $3 billion over the next 10 years to accelerate research. The hope is to have all disease curable, preventable, or manageable within the next 80 years. Ambitious, and my math might be off, but that would put me at about a shade over 110 years old. And you know, we'll really start to slow down about 105 over the next few decades. Through the couple's organization, the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, $600 million of the funds will go to the creation of a new San Francisco-based research center that will be home to engineers who will work alongside medical and scientific researchers, not on specific diseases, according to the report, but basic research, like a cell atlas of sorts that maps out every cell in the body. This will help them uh, come up with, you know, new prescriptions, fight your ailments. It's really good work, I don't know. Ten days ago, we found out that Apple was rethinking the whole idea of becoming an automaker and shifting its focus onto self-driving technology. Well, some reports indicated that the company suffered from management turnover and technical delays. Others suggested that Apple overestimated the power of its engineering prowess and underestimated the difficulty in starting a car startup from scratch. I mean, just consider the Tesla hiccups and the fact that Fisker, Coda, and Aptera are now answers to some intensely competitive automotive industry trivia. This week, the Financial Times reported that Apple has now approached McLaren Technology regarding a potential takeover or strategic investment. Both companies, as expected, are denying everything. Now, while Apple's efforts to enter the automotive manufacturing industry have had problems in the past, it's interesting to consider that they could accomplish either as an owner or strategic partner to the British supercar manufacturer that is valued up to $1.9 billion. I feel like the partnership would have the potential to either yield one of the coolest supercars that we've ever seen or just a fantastic financial cluster fire after years of engineering departments butting heads. I mean, remember, remember when Google bought Boston Dynamics and we're all just like, yeah, this is gonna be amazing. Let's not let history repeat itself. Or, sorry, it's not confirmed yet. Probable history. It's not like this probable history repeat itself. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.